What's going on, everybody? And welcome to the other side of the firewall podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest in cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who've made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shantines. What's up? What's up? What's going on? And Daniel Acevedo. How's it going, guys? What's going on, what's sir? So welcome to Monday's episode. So as promised, yeah, this is the uh, the CrowdStrike episode, people. I put it on social media. And we got to talk about it. It's still happening. But uh, please continue to tune in throughout the week. So Monday and Tuesday are topics. Wednesday, discussion. Thursdays, Ask a CISSP. Uh, this one should actually be Roger White. So I, I keep flip-flopping that episode. It's going to happen, people. All right, it's recorded. I just have to put it out there. Uh, and then Friday's everything else. So movies, books, games, all that good stuff. But without further ado, I give it to Shannon. So you say this is the CrowdStrike episode, like there's something important the. happened with CrowdStrike or something? Like, yeah, you said it, the, as if, you know, like, I, I'm, I'm not tracking, but okay, yeah. But <laughs> so, so this one comes from darkreading.com, written by Christina Beek. And the title of this one is Buggy CrowdStrike EDR Update Crashes Windows Systems Worldwide. All right, so even if you're not in the know when it comes to cybersecurity, like you, your life has been affected by this. If you were, if you were flying, if you were a consumer trying to go, uh, trying to go purchase things, even right. So Microsoft, right? We know they got. Uh, I'm going to say I'm, I'm throwing a guess out here, right? Like 85 percent of the world operates off Microsoft products, right? It's a guess. Um, I don't have any facts to back that up, but almost everything we do. Uh, Microsoft is is involved, right? So CrowdStrike is a software company that uh, does a lot of the cloud computing out there, right? And this engineering team um, had an issue uh, where they caused a massive disruption to Windows-based systems, right? So they were pushing out uh, an update uh, that had, it was a it was a bug in the memory scanning prevention policy, right? Now, what they say is, because when I initially started hearing about this, I was like, why did they not test this? Like, how was this not tested? That was my first thought that came to mind. Well, apparently they did. This was just unforeseen circumstances that came from it, right? So if you're, but here's my thing, if you're testing properly, you have to simulate the environments that they're going to be in, right? Mm -hmm. You have to simulate that environment. You have to try to, and I realize it's not something you can do all the time. You have to try to simulate things that you just can't foresee, right? But um, this just sounds like poor, poor QC, poor testing to me, right? The fact that they were like, okay, well, we did test it, but, you know, we didn't see these actions in our test environment. Well, but that's on you, right? But here's the thing. They rolled it back, right? So even with the rollback, right, which is what you almost always do when you have a when you have a faulty patch or you're trying to push something that doesn't go according to plan. Um, even with that, it wasn't as easy as just rolling back and everything returned to normal, right? So this had mm-hmm. far, 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 far reaching um consequences to it right so i don't i don't remember which one of you guys sent this out but it was uh it was the uh the flight tracker map that had what was it delta american and united which is like oh, the yeah, big three. oh yeah yeah. America. yeah and it showed the flight maps and everything and then as this crowd strike bug um was happening like it just showed it looked like a bunch of bees just all over you know a map of the united states and as this was happening like you could just see it going down i can imagine it was it was not quite like but almost like 9 11 you know what i'm saying because you know on 9 11 mm. when like they were grounding everything like that's what started happening and again this is just the major three right because not i'm not gonna say every um airline was affected but the big three were affected right and they have a lot of the the air traffic out there but um you have some smaller airlines that that you know they were fine they even had some overseas like ryanair which is one of the big ones overseas like in in europe um they were having some issues as well but uh this this kind of this hurt this hurt a lot of people right Um, there there was a um, meme uh so i don't mean to cut you off but there was uh, i had to bring it up there's a funny meme it was uh southwest it was like a a fake advertisement saying that we're still flying because we're running off windows 97 (laughs) So I saw that. Was that was that fake? It made me laugh. It made me I, laugh. I think it was. It had to be fake. You can't be running off. That. <laughs> <laughs> End of life <laughs> operating system. I was like, if that's true, I was like, that's even worse. Because like, because like, if that is true, like they should have been going. They should have had problems long before now. Like now yeah. that I think about it, like I just I just saw the headline and laughed. Right. I didn't read the article, and I was like, come on now. But I think part of me just didn't believe it. I was like, ah, that can't be true. But. It could be right. Like it's one of those things where it very well could have been, but um, but yeah, no, this was this was a this one. It had a lot of a lot of fallout for this man. Like and and the reason for it was it was for their Falcon yeah. sensor Falcon sensor servers. So the name is is proprietary. It's, it's trademarked to CrowdStrike. But what it is, it's a process where they they integrate a lot of stuff when it comes to like your virus protection, um, and things of that nature, right? And so 
because of that, that's why it has such far reaching effects, right? So like it's their next generation antivirus, their endpoint detection and response, cyber threat intelligence, managed threat hunting capabilities and security hygiene are all wrapped up into this one, this one mm-hmm. thing, right? And they're not the only ones that do that, right? Because like Trellix kind of does the same thing too. It used to be McAfee, yeah. it's Trellix now. It does the same thing, right? So it's not it's not unheard of for people to roll up everything and not have as many point products when it comes to management, like software management and things like that. But this is one of those where it was just so far reaching, man. And it was, it was so crazy. And uh, like, this is, this was a hit for CrowdStrike and they mentioned in the article and, and, and Daniel, I'll, I'll let you hit some of this up, but like they mentioned in the article <laughs> about how their stock is, how their stock has fallen and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And it's just, it's a Time bad to buy. Pump. Yeah. That, right, it's right. Because it's, it's, yeah, you get it low, right? Sell high, right? That's what they try to tell you to do. But yeah, but Daniel, what's your thoughts on this, man? No, definitely. I uh, wore my blue shirt today for all the blue screens out there and these poor people that are just trying to go into work. All the IT inside people go into work, like getting calls after hours and stuff like that, just embracing the suck, you know, hats off to them because this was a rough one. Yeah. Right? So I guess, yeah. so this, for me, I coined the term, this is going to be known as the update heard around the world because I've never thought of an update that had this like kind of reach and effects. This is kind of crazy. You just named a- the title of the, like, that is perfect. Thank you. Yeah. I don't have to think. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. So th- literally when I was reading through these two articles that you sent over, I was like, this is the update heard around the world because this is crazy. I've never, no software update. You've heard of worms, early, early mm-hmm. onset internet worms that, that have like crashed the internet because uh, the knowledge of how to fight these things and then the hackers like just being creative and seeing what they can do would, would, would damage the internet, right? Like, but that's like yeah. back in the, you know, 80s, before 80s, like earlier onset. But, you know, I guess story time, jumping topic here. So in my last job, right, I was hired as an ISM. Um, and, you know, in the military and the DOD, like the, uh, the real fields and like the job titles are kind of very segregated. But here in that job, obviously, when you get hired in the private industry, they want you to do like four or five hats, right? So I was, I was ISM, but I was an IT manager. So we were building up this network for this company. And they were running another network at the same time. Cyber grooming and IT grooming for this organization wasn't at its most mature. So the engineers dictated a lot because it was an operational environment. Mm -hmm. So the engineers would do updates for this proprietary software that they would do their testing for. And the ISO at the time really didn't like, you know, groom them to say, hey, we're doing updates. You got to run it by me. You just can't push it because it can break things. So within my first month, they created uh, two updates for the software that they use internally, and they literally bricked the software that they use in production, but it would brick it not in the beginning of their cycles. And they would do testing cycles like 12, 16 hours. It'd be like hour 10 and it would brick the software and they would lose the whole night's worth of uh, testing. And estimatedly that was like from like a hundred thousand to $300,000 worth of damage because, you know, you lose the testing cycles, you push back uh, delivery dates for the contracts, like all these kind of things, all these ramifications. So, you know, like in the beginning, I sat the, the lead engineer down. I said, hey, man, you li- literally cannot do this anymore because you're costing us way too much money. You're pushing back your own work. What we wound up doing is we took one test environment, just mm-hmm. the same operational environment, and to one environment would push the updates, test for a whole week. Just to make sure yeah. at some point in the testing, if there was anything that didn't show up the first couple of days mm-hmm. or the first couple of hours, we could see and then pivot, but it wouldn't be in the whole area, like in the whole production environment, right? That's right. And that, now I don't know, like obviously they have a lot more smarter people than me in CrowdStrike, but when they, in the article, it says that they could not mimic the, these effects in, in testing. And I find it really hard to believe, right? Yep. Because something that the major effect of this bug was that it creates a hundred percent CPU utilization mm-hmm. when it, when it goes into effect. And that's, what's causing the blue screens to like the, the, the systems has crashed so hard when they boot up, they don't have enough like memory and CPU to connect to the internet yep. to then pull the, the good update. Right. So I don't know, like, I, I feel like Ryan, you spoke in the last, uh, CIS, ask a CSSP. You guys were talking about that she's the the, the guests or the co-host. Um, I forgot her name. I'm so sorry. Right. Her. Uh, Elizabeth Stevens from DBSI. He, yeah, she yeah, made she a really, really good point where she thinks that she thinks it was like a mistake in copy and paste or mm. something in how how the patch was executed. So story time number two, when we when we worked together in an area, mm. we controlled the proxies, right? So there mm-hmm. was a very manual update to doing the proxies, the white and black lists which involved copying and pasting, which, okay, if it's a whitelist, 
you know, you don't copy the whole thing over. Maybe someone can get to a website that they're not supposed to, or a website can get into or something like that. But since it was text files, if you didn't look how you're copying and pasting and you deleted the header, the proxies would sit in front or in back of the firewall. And if you deleted the header, the traffic wouldn't know where to route. So you'd mm -hmm. literally take down a whole enterprise. Happened a lot. Happened more than it should have. And you know, we used to work shift work and I remember yeah, one too many yeah, times. Keep, keep, keep the in-house stuff in-house, man. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. The statute of limitations was, has to be up on that. It's been like 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Yes, over 15 years, but it was, it was a learning curve, right? It was some of the more junior people. It was a very easy fix. It would take like one right. or two minutes, but for one or two minutes, you bring down the enterprise, right? right. Um, goes unnoticed, right? Because there's other checks and balances in place right. to make sure the operations continue. But, you know, she brings up a really good point. The gravity and the extension of this, uh, this update, how it took down so much, mm -hmm. I think there's a bigger ripple effect there. Obviously, we're not going to hear the dirty laundry in these articles, but through the analysis, it's got to be something like that where something wasn't checked or something was pushed in a way that caused a domino effect that wasn't foreseen. I believe that more than they couldn't mimic the update in their testing environment. So those are my so, thoughts, Ryan. Go, go ahead. So, so real quick, Ryan, before you go, so it's going to be a question to both of you, right? So do you, do you think, because they kind of bring this up a little bit in the article, do you think it is an over-reliance on cloud environments that kind of leads to this type of this type of thing happening, right? Because I, I know I've said it before mm -hmm. on here, like the cloud is just somebody else's computer. That's all it is, right? People want to talk about the cloud, like it's so great, this, that, and the third, but it's just more computers. No, I think I think you alluded to it better before, like the way CloudStrike operates and especially these EDR and these more robust platform as services or software mm -hmm. services, they tend to roll more than one thing into um, yeah. an offering. Right. Yeah. So that way they could either charge more to give more services. Right. But then you have codependencies. I think that's yeah. what is the, the issue more so than the cloud platform. Unfortunately, CrowdStrike ties into Microsoft and then they service so much. So that's why it was mm -hmm. so widespread. Yeah. I think that that more so than just it being a cloud platform per se. But okay. what do you think, Ryan? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much in, in agreement with you. Um, I don't think it's an over reliance. I think it's just. Uh, people don't understand how uh, fragile the uh, the internet is, right? Like you said, it's just somebody else's computer, right? Like it's just a bunch of band aids, string tape. Like <laughs> our Web 2.0 is uh, badly built, <laughs> and this just goes to show you how reliant it is on a bunch of different components, a bunch of different bricks, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and we just have to, in my opinion, in the future. It needs to be rebuilt. There, there should be a web 3.0, web 3.5, whatever should be a separate worldwide web that's built upon some other foundation or standard, as opposed to like what, we, what we've been doing is just putting band-aids on things for decades. Uh, hmm. Will that ever happen? Probably not. <laughs> the internet will continue to be built on top of the old foundation, which was not great because we didn't expect for it to be this. Mm -hmm. Like when yeah. our internet was being built, they didn't expect for it to, to be what it is today. They couldn't, they couldn't envision yeah. it. And it's just really, and it's just what it is. People just, people just don't understand it. They think like, like you said, they think the cloud is something supernatural. Like, mm -hmm. no, it's just a bunch of really built, badly built structures. Big, big servers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like it's nothing we could really do about it unless we rebuild, which I just don't think like maybe this will push us in that direction, but it doesn't, I don't, I don't think anything will be done until it has to be done. And it doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be rebuilt. It just works. Is, is this that is catalyst? This that catalyst? Let me ask you that. Is Not this, yet. Is this I that think catalyst? it'll have to be something big. Nah, it would have to be something big. Like, which is scary, right? Because this is pretty this is widespread, widespread and right. Like, this is yeah. Really, <laughs> yeah. This, this is inconvenient. This is not total yeah. devastation. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, well so, so, here's the thing. So, you, so, so you say it's not total devastation, right? But like, what's to say next week we might be back here and we'll be talking about how, like, while this was happening. Who knows what people who had ill intentions went out there and took advantage of, right? Oh, they're doing because it right now. Because of things that yeah. it was yeah. affected. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, they're doing it right now, which is crazy to me. Um, but uh, I think before I jump in, so please like, share, subscribe. We're trying to hit uh, 500 subs. We're danger close. We're very close to hitting, uh, nice. five, I think we're like 40 short or whatever. We can get that today. Go ahead. It's yeah. like, I feel like a telethon. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> hit that subscribe button. Uh, and then we're trying to hit a thousand by the end of the year. Uh, 
And then with that being said, I, I did a special episode with Elizabeth Stevens from DBS Cyber. So living legend, aviation, as well as she's been doing a, a lot of great things. She has an, uh, a publication coming out. I got too many mice, nice. too many, too many mice right now. Hold on. So her publication coming out is building a resilient digital future, a comprehensive guide to cyber risk monitoring. So when this happened, it was like, oh yeah, we got to talk about this in somewhat real time. Uh, so we talked about it Friday evening, but I couldn't get the episode out until Saturday afternoon, evening, uh, just because I'm one man army. It takes a lot to get a show out pretty fast, uh, but definitely check that one out. We do talk extensively about uh, just her perspective, especially coming from her mindset and uh, the way that her business is structured and then just how it 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 really makes sense to to the conversation. So definitely check that one out. It's a special Ask a CISSP cross DBS cyber episode. So yeah, it's already out there in the uh, the interwebs and it's doing pretty good. It's tracking pretty well. With that being said, so for this episode, I want to bring up two things. So thing number one, yes, the internet is very fragile and janky. I don't want to be apologist for, right? But I think between CrowdStrike and Microsoft, I don't think people understand that the the, the blue screen of death, which B B S O D, I've never heard the acronym before. I know what blue screen of death is, but when I kept seeing it everywhere. I was like, what is BSOD? I felt dumb. I didn't want to ask the question. And then when I Googled it, I was like, duh. But uh, <laughs> it's a feature, not a flaw. Like it worked. Like as opposed to pushing a bad patch, it shut down mm -hmm. systems and it should. Yep. So yes, it does suck. But at the end of the day, Microsoft did their job, right? The operating system mm -hmm. saw that there was a bad patch yep. and it shut everything down. Because just think if it was nefarious, just think if it was a, a bad actor that had push something through the supply chain, right? Which could still happen because everything is, is yeah. uh, on fire right now. But had mm. this, had that been the lead and it had been a bad actor, we would want this to happen before something else, planes start dropping out the sky, you know, Skynet takes over type situation. So it did its job, but people are not mm. going to feel that way. People are going to just be pissed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're stuck <laughs> in airports. They can't, they can't yeah. buy things. Like it's, it's very, it makes people angry, but Microsoft did its job. You're going to say, so, 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 no, yeah. So let me ask you this. Then. So, so yes, that's, yes, that's very, very true, true, right? It, it did do its job, but from, from the point of, you don't want to be an apologist, but from the point of CrowdStrike, like, like I said, I think they should have done better testing. There should have been better quality oh, yeah, control yeah, yeah. and yeah. how they did it. The environment should have, the environment they tested in should have been more realistic to, to what they are off to, to their customers. Right now, CrowdStrike, I mentioned this about how, you know, prices falling and this, that, and the third. I think it was something along the lines of, I'm not looking at the article now, but like $16 billion or something like that. Oof. Is their mm -hmm. net worth has dropped? Is that is that right? It was like 20, yeah, the stock's right. down 20% or something like that. Like 31%. 31%? 31%. 31%. Oh, oh, yeah, it's okay. time to buy. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I know, I know it dropped. I know it dropped. Because they're not going anywhere. So. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it was, I checked for myself, though. I, I think it's it 31%. Was, I thought it was it a was lot. It was in tune to like sixteen billion dollars. Do you think CrowdStrike recovers from this? Let me ask you that. Do you think yes, people care yes. enough? Do you think people care enough to get to the bottom of it to know that it was CrowdStrike, or are they just like ah, everything's back to normal again? I'm good. Ah, do whatever. Twenty percent. Twenty percent. Okay, it was twenty percent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so I think that it it will be a rough year. Like so the rest of the year will be rough for CrowdStrike because their name is now, like their their name is now um, what do they call it when it's a household name or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. Infamous. Yeah, it's infamous. It's yeah, what people, it is people now. now know it only because they're so mad because of all the things that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but those people might not be the the uh, the people who matter to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yes, the they've lost public trust and the branding has been slightly tarnished. Uh, but as we know, working in in uh, Department of Defense, you just rebrand, right? Mm -hmm. They had, they just get a new name, a new <laughs> moniker, and no one will ever know. Like, not not the yeah. people who aren't there. Current, I want to, I keep want to say constituents, but they're not pol politicians, right? Like they're yeah. current mm -hmm. uh, shareholders. Yep. There it is. Yeah, they, they'll care, but they'll care because they're able to buy low and, like you said, sell high when the mm -hmm. stock starts to rise again. And they just either they might not even need to change branding, right? Like the investigation yeah. could, like no one's going to be sticking around to find out about the investigation except for us. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. The common person is like, show. man, like things work again. I don't care. So I think they'll be fine, but I think that they they are leaving wiggle room for somebody else to. Uh, get a little bit more of the uh, pie, so to speak, the, right? The share. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a land grab. That. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it because uh, they're going to have to testify. Like, it's going to happen. Like, if you, you bring planes down, right? Planes have to be grounded. You have to go talk to Congress. Yeah. So there will be an investigation, and then there will be someone from Microsoft or CrowdStrike or both 
uh, testify in front of Congress. Again, a very small portion of people will, will check it out or care. And then this might leave the door open for someone to come, like you said, uh, get a little bit more of a share in it because you don't want to have a single point of failure. Microsoft might get, oh, might get out scot-free on this though, if I'm being honest. Oh yeah, right? like, I yeah, yeah. It's it's not, they're, like, they're like, we rely yeah. on them to perform, perform a job for us, right? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No, uh, it would be third, will, third party be... risk management. Like, did you do yeah. your due yeah. diligence? Yeah. They'll run through the checklist yeah. and like, we did this, we did this, we did yep. this. Um, yeah. And now we have a uh, new checkbox that we have to, yeah. that has to be checked. And that's pretty much it for Microsoft. CrowdStrike yeah. will have yeah. to go an apology tour. They did, they went above and beyond. They, they released a KV article on how to like go into the system and, and recommendations, yeah. yep. hardline yep. connect to the internet, don't do Wi-Fi. Delete mm -hmm. this file, walk, you know, walk, walk from, from point, point one to point, point 10, ten, how to remove this. Even the most untechnical person to kind of fall through it, right? So yeah. I think they're going to be fine. <laughs> CrowdStrike, we'll see. I, it, it shows how widespread their EDR system and their cloud solution is, how many things have brought down. So they're already one of the major stockholders in cybersecurity. They're one of the go-to also in, in conjunction with like Median and all these other companies that go and coordinate with the right. government whenever there is like a ransomware or these kind of things. CrowdStrike is one of the companies that the government goes to, to seek, you know, professional level, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see if they lose some of that trust, especially with the government or with some of their contracts and kind of their dealings, or it will just be the stock price that plummets and then they'll rebound from this, you know, a couple months from now. Yeah, I think, I think they'll, they'll see the rebound. If they don't see the rebound, then it'll be a rebranding, but they're not going anywhere. They're, they're, <laughs> they're too entrenched. But again, they may yeah. have given space for someone to get a little bit more of a share, uh, which yeah. for the, like, so as a consumer, I like competition because it breeds better products. Mm -hmm. However, as uh, working for big organizations like Department of Defense, uh, when you have too many different uh, people within the system, it causes complications because of training and just like it, it, it's a headache on mm -hmm. technicians and administrators. So I get both sides of it, but at the end of the day, we can't let this happen again, but it is a wake up call. Like it had this been a bad actor. Like now we have a blueprint, like uh, Elizabeth said, we've had the ultimate uh, tabletop. Mm -hmm. Now we know what this yep. looks like if this were to happen in uh, like a supply chain attack or a commodization attack or something like that. We know how widespread it could be and how uh, vulnerable we are. So I think that this is allowing everybody to, to run their checklists. Everybody had a real time, like low threat. So far, like I know that it did impact overseas hospitals pretty heavily. Uh, yeah. Like mm -hmm. Ireland had like two thirds mm -hmm. of their uh, uh, general practices were, were impacted. So I don't know if there was any, uh, I don't want to say fatalities, but any casualties, right? So that could be somebody who's hurt yeah. or killed because of it. So that's more fallout to, to be seen. But for the most part, it seems that emergency services were restored. I heard like Alaska was down because of it. Alaska. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, wow. And that, that's crazy because I've lived there. Like you need emergency services because there's a lot of <laughs> crazy wildlife. There's a lot of crazy people. So they, I, I think we'll see the ripple effect. We'll see what happens days or weeks yeah. after. I'm a little a little nervous about the whole uh, FAA thing because I do have a trip coming up. So hopefully they get their stuff together before I, I'm I'm ready to, to fly out. So there are some some implications, uh, some things that we'll have to see throughout the weeks. However, I think we got away scot free on this one. Not scot free, but we we got a we got a free lesson. It wasn't it wasn't like a revel or a, a lock bid or someone like that. This was yeah. just this we shot ourselves in the foot. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but that's, but that's because, because it wasn't a it wasn't, wasn't a cyber a incident, incident, right? So that's right. The, that's, that's, that's kind of like yeah. the kind of scary scary, scary side, side of it. So there's a movie, movie that came out not too long ago on Netflix. Netflix. That has uh, Julia Roberts. Oh, leave the world behind. Marsha. Yeah. So I thought leave the about world it behind. as soon as this happened. Yep. <laughs> so, and also like for people that like to read, there's a book, it's kind of old. It's called, this is how they tell me the world is going to end. Mm -hmm. And it's all about cyber warfare. And it's very much like that movie. So it's kind of a scary thought not to leave the, the listeners with this last thought, but you know, I think, I, I, I think. I think, I think we're okay, okay in this, this incident because it really is just more like an IT related mess up and screw up, right? Yeah. But this, like, like you said, is a perfect tabletop and it shows that, that if you can get something that's a cyber attack that can initiate something like this, that this widespread, it doesn't really need to break in, steal information, change information, just halt at the, at the lowest level and be as widespread. 
that yeah. would be a very, very messy recipe. So yeah. yeah, you're completely right. So I, I want to leave people with one last, last thought because I have to give everybody <laughs> their flowers, right? Uh, there's a guy named Vincent Phil, Phil Bustier. Like, it looks like Philip Buster to me, but he's a French French gentleman, right? Mm. When this happened, out like maybe minutes or hours or whatever, he took advantage of it. He 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 made the meme that went around the world. So he posted a picture of himself in front of the crowd strike. <laughs> I don't know, visage, I guess you would say, like he's in, he's in the cross strike offices, quote unquote. And he says, just push the little patch, uh, taking the afternoon off. Oh, yeah. And then <laughs> like 40 minutes later, he says something like, uh, uh, I was fired. Like, I, like, this is truly, what did he say? He says something like, uh, unfair. I was fired or something like that. And like the internet went off. Like, yeah, when I, last time I checked, it was like 26 point something million. Uh, <laughs> this guy does this professionally. So his whole thing is if you go to his, his Twitter, so he's a, a trainer and teacher in digital citizenship, critical thinking, specialized in fake news and social uh, networks, OSINT AI digital consultant. So he then goes into a step-by-step -step of how he made it, right? So if you follow his thread, he shows how he made the, uh, the infamous picture, which is really just Photoshopped uh, with AI generation. He shows all the mistakes in it. Like uh, he was unable to crop certain things. So it looks kind of like he has a horn or a piece of hair sticking out his head. Uh, his <laughs> hand is, is small, like a toddler's hand because he has AI to make it. And he has all these things, all these tells, which would show you that this is made up. This is fake news. And then he goes mm -hmm. in to kind of like teach a lesson. So hopefully people learn from this, not to necessarily trust what you see, it's like with the Southwest meme and all of, all those other things, yeah. but also like it's, it also goes to show how this could be used for nefarious reasons, right? For like fake news or things yeah. of that nature. So he, he taught a master class while this was happening. And I hope that that's sunk into people because now all the bad guys have flooded in since this happened to try to yeah. steal yeah. people's information, right? There's a bunch of fake registered domains for CrowdStrike. People are trying to collect credentials and things like that. Like bad guys don't take the day off. Uh, but he yeah. was ahead of it. Like he was showing how like you can easily confuse people. And he was like going through the list of why people would, would fall for it. Like everybody wants a villain. Everybody wants to believe in certain things. I, you know, he was, he was in the midst of it. Um, and he, he taught a pretty good clinic on, on uh, fake news. So gotta, gotta get his due with his due. And like, he has, how many followers does he have now? He has 79,000 followers on Twitter now because of it. Mm. Nice. So. I give it up to the guy. He did, he did a good job, but yeah, just be careful out there because people are going to try to use this to their advantage. Uh, be careful of the articles you read only go to the sources. So Microsoft did release instructions, go to their website. Don't go to a third party. Don't mm -hmm. trust it. And then just, if you have a flight scheduled or if you are I don't know, I, I can't think of all the nefarious ways they could use this against you, but just go to the source for everything. Like don't click on links. Like, just be careful what's in your inbox. Be careful if you get a text message. They're definitely going to try to take advantage of this for weeks to come. So there it is. So this is a very long uh, Monday episode. So, but I, <laughs> hey, like you said, it was the patch heard around the world. So I'm definitely going to title it. Like, that, that is a good name for it. I appreciate that. Uh, that'll be the name of the article as well. So definitely continue to tune in. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, our topics. Wednesday, discussion. Uh, Thursdays, ask us. And then Fridays, everything else. So movies, books, games, all that good stuff. And there is a bonus episode out there. So definitely check out my episode with Elizabeth Stevens. She is the uh, CEO of DBS Cyber. Hit up all the websites that go by our name. We are the other side of the firewall. Uh, it could also be the other side of the FW or ask a CISSP. You can find me personally. I'm on pretty much every social media platform under Rye Rye Security Guy. That's R-Y-R-Y Security Guy. And you can find Daniel on LinkedIn by his name, Daniel Acevedo. Stay safe. Stay secure.